Medical. I'm Dr. David Johnson, Professor of Medicine and Chief of Gastroenterology at Eastern Virginia Medical School, Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia. Newsflash, the projected lifetime cancer risks from CAT scans, computed tomography, are alarmingly increasing. Now, let's take a step back, and I would invite you to look at a fantastic white paper that was commissioned by the American College of Gastroenterology, the World Gastrological Association, back in 2014, and published and looked at the life, the issues of risk exposure for not only the physicians or the care providers, but also patients, and how we could potentially mitigate strategies around that. Recognize that ionizing radiation, regardless of medical or non-medical, is recognized by the FDA as a carcinogen, and the data on that is based on looking at lifetime risk as exposed to several databases. One is the Nagasaki Hiroshima, uh, the atomic bomb explosions, looking at these people longitudinally over time, and the same for people that have occupational exposures, maybe medical or, or environmental exposures based on your job. But nonetheless, these are longitudinal databases that have defined an incremental risk. It is important to understand that the types of radiation exposure can be twofold implication. One is deterministic. That's what the radiation oncologists use when they try and try and yeah. attack a cancer that's immediately. So it's evident, may be seen as uh, necrosis, skin may be a skin burn, but nonetheless, it's a deterministic and immediate. And the other is stochastic. That means over time, insidious. And that insidious may be associated with changes that are not overtly evident, maybe over years and decades may be more evident, and that's what the purpose of this discussion is today. It's clearly evident more in younger patients exposed to these type of ex uh, radiation exposures. And recognize if you go back and look at the National Academy of Science report 2006, they estimated that a radiation dose of 10 millisieverts, which is basically the exposure which you see with the abdominal CT scan, has a Lifetime risk at the time estimated of approximately of a solid cancer leukemia, one in a thousand. A review in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2007 by Dr. Brenner all looked at this, but it defined it as over time. So a younger patient had a three times greater likelihood of a cancer related death based on their that radiation exposure over time. So that becomes where stochastic over time makes a difference. Now let's go to the current data because up to now, it was estimated that approximately 1% of new cancers had some radiogenic exposure. We've seen the increment of CAT scans logarithmically increase, and it's gone from 3 million in 1980 to 72 million in 2007, and the current in 2023 was 93 million. It's not related just to population. So population independent, the numbers have gone up considerably and, and not necessarily justifiable based on population increases. But this current model was very important because it introduced new assessments where previous assessments of this role of risk were based on models that were based on really not well-defined analyses. This current analysis was a risk model that was based on data extraction from CTs that were done at 143 U.S. hospitals. They were, they were looking at 22 healthcare organizations over 20 states, so broad exposure and well-extracted. But they also then looked at the tissue exposure based on 120,000 cases they did at the University of San Francisco and used all this to model into their analysis by Monte Carlo simulation and came up with the projections based on normalization. They also excluded end-of-life one year or less CT scans. They excluded things like PET scans, where obviously they're being evaluated for cancers, potential cancers. And anything with intervention, which obviously increases the radiation exposure, so radiation exposure from an intervention or biopsy were excluded, end of life the same. But nonetheless, the data were quite striking. What they found, the estimated radiation cancer risks were also age-adjusted. They were higher in children, but it represented only 5% of the overall numbers of CTs done in the 2023 
but the cancers in children were related to th to thyroid and breast cancer, and, and these things are related to over time. Again, something that may be more important when you start talking about pediatric exposure, but the the relative risk for the adults, again, counting for 95% of the CT scans, were lung cancers increased uh, over 22,000 new cases, colon cancer increased 8,700 cases, and leukemia nearly 8,000 cases, and bladder cancer, 7,100 7, cases. In females, it was the second most common, accounting for 5,700 new cases. So what we're looking at is that these cancers were evident and projected based on CT exposure. Now, the largest number of cancers projected resulted from the abdominal and pelvis CT, which accounted for about 37% of all the CT scans, and the chest CTs were a second at 21%. Now, there are some challenges to this because they are using life expectancies uh, that are normal for patients without CT scans. That may make a difference, but nonetheless, that's a, a bit of a criticism, potentially, or a limitation. But the numbers are still the same. They've gone from 1% estimates on radiogenic cancer, now using this new analysis and the dosimetric changes on tissue penetration in 18 different areas, it's much more specific, and the analysis suggests that number from 1% is now 5%. So what does this mean? Well, it means that we have wonderful technology. Uh, there are potentially alternatives, uh, and the potential for utilization of alternatives. We're questioning whether or not this is really the best that would change management. It's really the ultimate test. We did an op-ed a number of years ago and actually challenged it CT scans or radiation exposures uh, as it relates to anything uh, should be potentially given informed consent because it means you're talking about the risks, alternatives, and the consequences, and that's really part of informed consent. We do that all the time. We do uh, CAT scans, uh, the consent about, the uh, concern about uh, the IV type of uh, ionizing uh, or uh, ionated contrast, but nonetheless, that risk is de minimis relative to what we now potentially look at for cancer risk. So my plea is to be a pause on the button of ordering something just because you think it's easy and convenient. Patients need to be aware of this, but care providers ordering these tests exclusively sensitive to the fact that this may, over time, be a stochastic or sequential evaluation. And oh, there have been a, a number of initiatives directed at what, we, what was called a smart card, where the patient would have an ongoing assessment of what their cumulative radiation dose and what their radiation exposures were that really is not borne out, but nonetheless remains on the to-do list, if you will, for radiologists potentially to change the patterns of what we view as potentially radiogenic cancer-related risk. Do a pause button next time you order one of these and ask, is this something that's really the best interest of the patient? Clearly a wonderful technology, nothing exception uh, accepted there, but nonetheless, it's just going to change management. Dr. Dave Johnson, give some thought next time you press the order button. Thanks again for listening.